Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Kenny Wallace Show, brought to you by JEGS, the leader in high-performance aftermarket car parts. Remember to go to JEGS.com for everything you need to fix your vehicles up. I'm really excited because uh, basically this is the first show of the year and racing has started. They're down there in Daytona for the Daytona 500. And the big story in the garage area is this one. Why is our seven-time champion, why is Jimmy Johnson putting himself through so much pain? As they say in AM debate radio, you know, when you're listening to radio, you're just listening. So let me paint the picture for you. (laughs) I don't know why that struck me so funny. I guess I I grew up on KMOX radio right here in St. Louis. And uh, I love AM radio. It's so much fun. So Jimmy Johnson on Thursday night before the Daytona 500, seven-time champ. Certainly going to have a provisional or something because he's our seven-time NASCAR champion. He's right there with Dale Earnhardt Sr. and Richard Petty. Jimmy Johnson is great. Like, wow. But here's where the story gets a little wild. All right, Jimmy Johnson leaves NASCAR, right? He leaves. And around this time, Jimmy's like, I'm moving out west. I need to get away from Charlotte, North Carolina. I've talked to my crew chief, Chad Canals. I've talked to my owner, Rick Hendrick. And they're like, okay, Jimmy, you can move out west away from the team. And, you know, just make sure you check in. You're part of the meeting. So, you know, the Herminator. Now, let me throw my disclaimer out there. This is all, this is all Kenny Wallace thinking. And, you know, there's an old, there's an old saying. I have a memory like an elephant. Oh, you remember, do you? Yes, I remember Jimmy Johnson towards the end of his NASCAR career, take one, meaning the first time, he goes out on the West Coast, wants to get away, be mentally strong. He's out there, he's riding trail bikes, he's doing the skiing. You know, I'm mentally clear, I'm, I'm mentally strong, and I get it. I mean, that's the same reason I moved to St. Louis, Missouri, to get away from everything being so toxic in North Carolina. So Jimmy Johnson uh, inevitably quits NASCAR, quits it. I mean, that's just the way it is. That's all there is to it. He quit. He he doesn't have anything to do with Hendrick anymore. The team that he won those seven championships, he doesn't have any executive decisions. He's just flat-ass gone. Jimmy Johnson is gone from NASCAR. He's gone from Rick Hendrick. So he goes indie car racing. Now, when he's indie car racing, he's got this big sponsor called Carvana, right? Where they make you an offer for your vehicle. They bring a truck to your house. They load your vehicle up and that's Carvana, Carvana, however you want to say it. Respond right here. Carvana, Carvana. You say potato, I say potato. Anyway, great sponsor. So Jimmy Johnson runs two years of IndyCar racing, right? Okay, he has a good race or so, but this is this is Jimmy Johnson, the West Coast kid. You know, uh, Travis Pastrana is his buddy, so he's kind of got that X Games in him. I'm going to run NASCAR. I'm going to run IndyCar. You know, I, I'm going to golf. I'm going to – Jimmy Johnson's going to air it out, right? He's a West Coast kid. So I get it. I get that mentality. But Indy cars proved to be a little difficult, right? Let's, he's 48 now. Let's back it up. You know, he goes Indy car racing, what, 44 years old? Those cars pull a lot of G-forces. You know, this is Kenny saying this, you know, kind of hard to, once you get in your mid-40s, kind of hard to teach an, an old dog new tricks. Now, I like what Tony Stewart's doing because you're just going drag racing. Straight, you know, you're done, six seconds. And, and that's that's everything, right? Really, three seconds. So it doesn't go very good for Jimmy. But we're going to give Jimmy a break because he's a seven-time champion. And let's make this very clear. Jimmy Johnson's phone number right here. And he's a friend of mine. And, he, and Jimmy Johnson will come on 
Kenny conversation. Just I'm waiting for the dust to settle with Jimmy. He, he's got a lot going on. He's, he's, he's living overseas. He's been out to the West Coast. Jimmy, Jimmy's got a lot going on. All right. Now that I've told you all that, what did that take? Two minutes? Three minutes? The question begs this. Why in the hell, at 48 years old, a seven-time champion, he's done it all. I know he's a racer. I get that. Look, both hands up. Stop right there. Hey, Herman, why are you racing at 60 years old? Well, because I realize that retirement and the, the word content is not in my vocabulary. So I get it. Jimmy's a gamer. He wants to compete. But that's not all. I'm going to tell you right now why Jimmy Johnson came back to NASCAR. So Thursday night for the uh, dual 150s, Jimmy Johnson almost was, was within two football fields of not making the Daytona 500. That's why I'm doing this show. So I, I can see Charlie right now. What's the headlines of this show going to be? Our seven-time champion was just happy to make a race. What? <laughs> That's the truth. That's the hard, cold facts of my dear friend, Jimmy Johnson. This is an incredible conversation. I mean, this is one where we're sitting at the bar, right? Jimmy Johnson is just happy to make the Daytona 500. How the hell did we get in this situation? Right? All right. So I'm going to tell you why. Jimmy wants to be a car owner. So he's teaming up with Maury Gallagher, the owner of Allegiant Airlines, the CEO of Allegiant Airlines, you know, airplanes, commercial airliners. Maury, Maurice Gallagher, however you want to say his name, Maury Gallagher, CEO of Allegiant Airlines is worth $464 million. Jimmy, now this is me. This is me. I'm putting words in Jimmy's mouth. Hey, Wallace, don't be putting words in my mouth. Jimmy, I'm not. I'm just, once Jimmy Johnson's watching this, he's going to come on Kenny conversation. But if I'm dead on, he's going to go, Herman, you were right. So I didn't want to bother Jimmy right now because he's down there for the Daytona 500. So I'm taking a shot. And I'm admitting it right here. I'm taking a shot. Except this is coffee, not beer. So Jimmy Johnson wants to be like Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon's second in charge. At Hendrick. It's Rick Hendrick, then Jeff Gordon. All right. Jimmy Johnson wants to be like Tony Stewart, Stewart Haas Racing. Jimmy Johnson wants to be like Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan, the owner of 23 Racing. Uh, Jimmy Johnson wants to be like Brad Keselowski, Roush Fenway, RFK, right? I painted the picture for you. All these race car drivers are saying, you know, the $100 million that I have right now in my bank account? Now, I'm going to repeat this. This is going to be hard for you normal people. <laughs> I'm normal, too. It's going to be hard for you all to understand this one. If you have $100 million, now, I'm inflating it a lot. It's probably got $50 million, But let's say, let's say these drivers have $100 million when they retire. It's not enough. And here's why. Because they live an extravagant lifestyle. Hey, send my Lear 40 over there to pick my wife up. Hey, I got four houses. I got one in Kenny Port, Maine, because we're doing, my wife's a model. You know, I'm doing the New York scene. I'm doing the LA scene. You fly a jet out to LA, that's, that's 20 grand. Boom, like that. Especially if you're living over there in Charlotte. Imagine living in a different country. So all of a sudden, you're spending a hundred grand a month because you're wanting to go to Barrett Jackson. You're wanting to drink the wine. You want to hang out with Mr. Rick, right? I know how much money these guys spend, and it is like, whoa, okay. <laughs> wow. So you're Jimmy Johnson. You're Jeff Gordon. You're Brad Keselowski. You're Denny Hamlin. And you're like, these guys are going through some money, like quick. And I'm 50 now, and I, I got to do something. 
So after Jimmy Johnson does all this, he looks around and he goes, I need to, I, I want to be a car owner. I want to be a car owner. But Jimmy, to be a car owner with Maury Gallagher, the CEO of Allegiant Airlines, Jimmy wants to pair himself up with a real wealthy dude, right? Because he doesn't want this team to go down. So Jimmy's super smart. He looks around and he goes, man, what car owner's got a shitload of money? Charlie, don't, don't beat that out. I fit that right word right in where it needs to be. So you look at, you know, Keselowski, you know, that, that's, that, that's Roush Fenway, lots of money. You know, you look at all these guys, you look at Denny Hamlin, who's got more money than, than Michael Jordan? He's making $40 million a year on, on selling tennis shoes, and he's retired. So Jimmy Johnson does it right. But here's why Jimmy Johnson's driving the race car, okay? Let's take a look at that team. Okay, so Maury Gallagher owns it. Richard Petty sold his shares back to Maury Gallagher. So Maury's the only owner. Jimmy Johnson comes in. Now there's two owners, right? The King, which I respect immense. The King is just there and he's making his money, doing his deal. But if you look at it, the King sold his shares back. So the King doesn't own, Richard Petty does not own anything with this team. He's just, He's just there and he's making money and he's doing things and he's awesome and he's the face of NASCAR. So when you look at Legacy Club is the name. Legacy Club is owned by Maury Gallagher and now Jimmy Johnson. So Jimmy needs to either put five or 10 million of his own money in or he's got to do what's right. So Jimmy, now this is where it gets good. Jimmy brings Carvana sponsorship from his IndyCar try, right? Carvana likes him. So Jimmy's there with all this money now, and now Maury Gallagher's going, all right, now we're big time. Look here, everybody's, everybody's coming to my garage area, just like Tony Stewart did with Stuart Haas, right? Gene Haas was a billionaire, but he, he really wasn't taken serious because he wasn't winning anything until Tony Stewart came. So this is what's going on right here at Legacy Club. Jimmy Johnson, the seven-time champ, and it doesn't hurt to have Richard Petty the King there. They're really making Maury Gallagher and this Legacy Club team. That's what it's called, Legacy Club. They're making this, this team really strong right now. And in the meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson is going to become a real owner and get real money in return so Jimmy now can go ahead and live this great lifestyle you know, put the black jacket on like Jeff Gordon, walk around, hey, let me tell you what you need to do here. You know, that's the way it is. So I love Jimmy Johnson to death. I think, look, here's the end. This was a great move by Jimmy. Brilliant move because he saw what Jeff Gordon's doing. He saw what all these heroes, Rusty Wallace, my brother, owns nine dealerships. I mean, doing good, right? But these guys spend so much money that it is hard to keep this pace up. I'm telling you, if you got $100 million and you're 48 years old and you run this lifestyle, you, you got you to keep an eye on the checkbook, right? Because if you're in the stock market right now and you, know, you can't count on the stock market gaining 10,000 points every three years, all right? I understand money. I'm smart with money. So good move by Jimmy Johnson. So that's why. And this is where Paul Harvey, you kids don't understand this. I, I've been saying this lately. Paul Harvey did radio and he would say, and that's the end of the story. So Jimmy Johnson decides he wants to get into car ownership because you can make money. He can live the extravagant lifestyle. He can, he can hang out with the Barrett Jackson dudes. He can, you know, get the condo in, up there in New York. He can fly across the pond. He can keep spending a hundred grand a month or more and not have to worry about depleting the checkbook. Jimmy Johnson's a gamer. He wants to be a car owner. He found Maury Gallagher and Jimmy brings some money. Maybe I don't know. Jimmy's going to come on the show. I won't ask him that, but let's just assume Jimmy brings five, 10 million. He gives it to Maury. Now he's a player. He brings Carvana. Now he's running some races. Now he's, He's letting the world know, look, Jimmy Johnson's racing. You know, he's in the sport. So there you got it.
Uh, great, brilliant move by Jimmy Johnson. Uh, and listen, this was the story on social media. Jimmy's biggest fans were going, oh, my God, why is Jimmy doing this? He's a seven-time champion. He almost missed the date. Listen, Jimmy Johnson came off turn four and was not in the Daytona 500. J.J. Yelly goes high because he's got this big move on Ross Chastain. And, and J.J. Yelly thinks he's going to pack J.J. Or no. Okay. J.J. Yelly thinks he's going to pack, pack Ross Chastain in the ass. So he moves up so he doesn't hit him so hard. Jimmy just stays straight. Jimmy don't make no move. He just stays straight. Two football fields later, Jimmy Johnson makes the Daytona 500. But can you see on Jimmy Johnson's resume, Jimmy Johnson missed the Daytona 500 after coming back and, and making a try. Listen, I, Jimmy Johnson can do whatever he want. He's one of, he is probably the greatest race car driver. Respond right here. And here's why Jimmy Johnson is the greatest NASCAR driver of all time right now. Kyle Larson's there, but Kyle doesn't have seven championships racing against Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon. You got to remember, Jimmy Johnson won seven championships racing against Jeff Gordon, racing against Tony Stewart. So we, sh we certainly did not want to see Jimmy Johnson miss the Daytona 500, and that's why I'm doing this show. Why is Jimmy Johnson, after a three-year layoff, why is he coming back? And I just told you why. This is what he had to do to get in to, you know, get ownership stake at, at Legacy Club. Um, all right. So that was pretty good. Let's look at it. That was a 17-minute show. I think it was well worth it. I think you're going to like it. I think you're down there in Daytona. You're going to like the, this show. I paint the picture. Um, I tell the truth. And wow, Jimmy had to go through a lot. Uh, and really put his put it on the line and, and, and become a, a car owner. I applaud Jimmy Johnson. Thank you, Jimmy. I think you're going to elevate Legacy Club like Tony Stewart did at Stewart Haas. Um, let me see. Let me look at my notes. Um, yep, 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 yep. All right. Remember, he's 48 years old. Uh, there's nobody in our sport right now that old. Uh, Harvick just left and went to the TV booth. Here, here, Jimmy Johnson started his career back up at 48 years old. And now we know why. And that is the rest of the story. All right, everybody. Remember, uh, we are in podcast form. This is 18 minutes long, 19 minutes long. You're probably going to be able to listen to this one on your way to work because it's so short. So remember, we are in podcast form. We are on iTunes. We are Spotify. And I always forget to say this. Subscribe right here, will you, please? We're so close to the 100,000 subscriber trophy from YouTube. And uh, love you all. The Daytona 500, NASCAR's biggest race. Until the next show, goodbye, everybody.